Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to the infectious madness of Dr. Decker. In the last episode, we were talking with Claire, who confirmed that David did die, but apparently she fixed him. I'm pretty sure that was the last thing we left off with. Let me let me just double check. David wanted to have a talk about our relationship. Not something any married person wants to hear. He said he'd been with Iris for about a year and that he loved her. He said he didn't love me anymore. Which I know is a lie. You don't just fall out of love with somebody. I reacted badly. I grabbed the nearest weapon I could find, which happened to be the steak knife, and stabbed him with it. There was so much blood. I instantly regretted it. So, I fixed him. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is a highly concerning phrase. To be perfectly honest, I don't feel badly for David. I, I know he got stabbed and he died. And, you know, I, I should feel badly for him. But to be brutally honest, I don't. He acted like a colossal asshole. He he started dating his deceased friend's daughter, whom he knew since she was a, a little girl. And then maybe he realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And he started seeing someone more age appropriate. I'm just like, you, you acted like a colossal asshole in all of this, David. I don't, mm. It was about a week later. I brought David back to life. Not with voodoo, not with virginal sacrifice. I just willed it to happen and it did. Dr. Decker told me it was possible, but only if you're not buried. He says once you're in the ground, there's no coming back. But until then, you have a chance at resurrection. Okay. I'm, there's just so much to unpack. It, one, how does Decca know that? Two, what kind of therapy sessions is Decca offering? That's fucked up. Oh, okay, there's... Just go, go with the flow. Go with the flow. What exactly do you want me to go into here? It was about a week later. There's so much. I brought David back to life. Not with voodoo, not with virginal sacrifice. I just willed it to happen and it did. Dr. Decker told me it was possible, but only if you're not buried. He says once you're in the ground, there's no coming back. How does he but know that? Until then, you have a chance at resurrection. Okay, you want me to go into resurrection? Got it. Oh, oh dear. Also, I don't know how to spell resurrection. I think it's just one S. That looks about what, right? Yes, resurrection. But now that I've seen the results, I don't think there's anything holy about it. I think reanimation is more an accurate term. Like, I'm an evil necromancer raising things from the dead. I'm, I'm inclined to agree. I, this'll sound weird. I wonder if she had done it sooner, if the results would have been less severe. I've been saying this for a while now. David, how she describes him, it doesn't sound like she's describing an elderly optician or middle-aged optician. I don't know how old he is. But it, it sounds more like she's describing a caveman. He doesn't like technology. He grunts. He hunts things. Like, that's... That's... Oh. Re... Uh, no, no, no. Animation. David was dazed and confused when I brought him back to life. As you'd expect. He was scared. He didn't want me to go near him at first. Which is understandable as I did kill him. But I didn't really succeed in bringing him back. 
He wasn't a big talker before, but even monosyllabic words were more than what he seemed able to give me. I, I thought before she said that David was a wonderful conversationalist. And now she's saying that he wasn't a big talker. Maybe, maybe he was very introverted. And when you did get him in conversation, he was very well-spoken and thought out. But I'm, I'm guessing maybe she, she means something like that. Just, yeah, I, I do wonder if because she waited a week, his brain had decayed. I don't, I don't know how fast it takes a brain to decay. And to be honest, I'm not gonna Google that. I'm gonna get some fucked up images if I Google that. So mm -mm, I'm, I'm gonna assume that a week is long enough for decay to start. Let's, let's see. Yes, resurrection. But now that I've seen the results, I don't think there's anything holy about it. I think reanimation is more an accurate term. Like, I'm an evil necromancer raising things from the dead. The results. I think his brain was already decaying during the week that he was dead. Important bits. So when I brought him back to life, I didn't heal him completely. Just gave him life in the state he was in. I mean, he's hunting and killing things and trying to roast them on fires he can only light with matches, but that's about it. He's your basic Neanderthal. So I have a problem. Okay. You just have one problem. It, it strikes me as that you have many problems. Pro no. Problem. I'm being charged with murder because the police don't know he's still alive and I can't get David to vouch for me for obvious reasons. I think it would raise quite a few more questions than answers, which is why I'm hoping that you'd be able to help me. What, what do you want my help with? How can I, oh God damn it. The, the caps lock, the caps lock always gets me. Considering the circumstances, I'd be grateful if you could see your way to declaring me temporarily insane at the time of the murder. To lessen my sentence. Because I'm not a killer. But I can't prove otherwise. You don't still think I'm a killer, do you, Doctor? Girl, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I... I... Oh... My gut is to say I think you're crazy, but given that the the world that this game is set in, I'm like, this is also possible. I think she's crazy if this were real life. Like, if I was a psychiatrist and this lady was sat across from me saying, oh yeah, I killed my husband, but I brought him back. He's a bit of a caveman, but still, I'd be like, this, this woman has issues. This woman has problems. Can we get some medication for her? Like, that's what I'd be saying. But given that this is a game where this stuff is, I think, you know, I think it happens. I, I kind of think that she has brought her husband back to life. I, oh no. Oh no. What defines a killer? She did kill someone, but then she brought them back to life. It... it you, you can't... I, I was gonna say, it's not like stealing a handbag. You steal the handbag, but then you feel guilty, so you bring it back. Like, no one got harmed in that scenario. No, Whoever owned the handbag has their property back. You know, no one's out of pocket. Everyone's got what they should have. Everyone's where they should be. But you, you can't... You can't really compare killing someone and then bringing them back from the dead. You, you can't say that's comparable to stealing a handbag. But he is alive. 
but he's not alive because his brain decayed so he doesn't have the same quality of of life as before he's not doing his optician job he's just hunting shit oh no at best she's committed gbh because gbh grievous excuse me uh, there's so much to unpack it's confusing my brain Grievous bodily harm, that would be, that would be something like a stabbing. You could also have assault with a deadly weapon, assault with intent to kill, um... I'm trying to think, I, I think I've mentioned this before in this Let's Play, I, I did study law at Sixth Form College. That, that is, for any Americans watching this, that is nowhere near like a university degree please do i'm i'm not a qualified lawyer i have an a level not i have an as level in law i'm trying to think if you kill someone they are dead however maybe i don't know the the hospital people manage to defibrillate them and you know, bring them back to life. What would the person who did the stabbing be charged with? I I think I think they'd be charged with Oh, uh, you know, what would it be? Assault with intent to kill? But I don't think they'd be charged with murder. So I, I think I'm gonna go with no. Thank you, Doctor. So then you'll help me. You'll say I was temporarily insane. Oh God. Oh God. And this comes down to who I believe Claire is. This... I'm inclined to go with yes. Just because I have no sympathy for David. He groomed his friend's kid. And you... Maybe he didn't groom her. Maybe he didn't. But looking after and acting as a sort of guardian figure for a child and then marrying them when they are of legal age, that's fucked up. And he's then in a relationship with her for a few years and either he dumps her for someone younger or he goes to her and says, I behaved very badly by marrying you. We don't really fit because of the huge age gap. I'ma go be with someone else. I can see her being very traumatized by that. You know, you, you tricked me. I was a child. I was barely legal and we were married. I, yeah, I'm, I'll go for that. Thank you, doctor. That's all I needed to hear. From you or Dr. Decker. But Dr. Decker wouldn't do that for me. He wanted something else. Oh, what? Please. Please. Tell me he didn't want you to go to his sex dungeon. What did Decker want? Dr. Decker teased me mercilessly about my alleged ability. He didn't believe I'd reanimated David. Once, he presented me with a dead mouse and commanded me to give it life again. I didn't, of course. It's not something I'd throw around lightly. He changed his mind about me eventually. And then he mentioned the girl. What girl? I'm... I'm genuinely quite concerned as to where this is going. Think, Doctor, think. Use your brain. Or your notes if you have to. What? What? Screw it. Yeah, what girl did Decker mention? He told me he'd locked up a girl in the basement of his house. Just for me. And he asked me to reanimate her. It was Iris. I said I couldn't reanimate something that wasn't dead, and he said that wouldn't be a problem. 
So I agreed. I just played along. I was hoping it wasn't real. I assumed it wasn't real. But he was offering me what I wanted, a temporary insanity diagnosis. What the fuck? Oh, so he did want you to go to his sex basement, but not in the way I was thinking. What the? Claire says the girl in Decker's basement was Iris. Also, do we... Uh, yeah, we've asked her about this. Gotta ask Mariana. I don't want to ask Mariana about that. This is... So Iris was in Decker's basement. Bryce says he took her to a police station. Um, oh, it's, it's all about Bryce and Claire today. Okay, um... I kind I kind of want to watch that again. He told me he'd locked up a girl in the basement of his house, just for me, and he asked me to reanimate her. It was Iris. I said I couldn't reanimate something that wasn't dead, and he said that wouldn't be a problem. So I agreed. I just played along. I was hoping it wasn't real. I assumed it wasn't real. But he was offering me what I wanted, a temporary insanity diagnosis. Okay. One, how did Decker manage to get Iris into his basement? Or do I not want to know the answer to that? Two, I love the, I can't reanimate something that's not dead. That won't be a problem. Decker! Decker! You, you can't be doing that. You're a, you're a psychiatrist. Iris. It didn't happen. Dr. Decker called me from his house to cancel. He was furious. He said that Iris had escaped and he blamed me for it. He said that I must have set her free after he told me about her. I knew it was all lies anyways. He was obviously titillating himself by reprimanding me. He knew I'd never want to speak to Iris again, so I couldn't prove it either way. Okay. I was, I was gonna say it sounded like she never went to his house, that I assumed it wasn't real. Okay. And that's, that's where Bryce comes in. Bryce followed Decker to his home and was like, oh shit, a young lady in the basement, I'll set her free. Okay. You know what, Bryce? Good job. That, that lady was about to get murdered. Good, good job, Bryce. That's the only time I'm gonna tell him good job. Um, I wanna, I wanna ask about your bracelet. I don't know what you're after, but I don't know anything about that. Okay, it's just cause she keeps fiddling with it and it, it looks like a child's bracelet. Hmm, um, what was it here? Yeah, what changed Decker's mind? Dr. Decker asked if I could prove David wasn't dead, so I took him to the lake house. He saw that I was telling the truth. I can take you to see him too, if you like. Would you like to see David, Doctor? Hmm. How far down the rabbit hole do we want to go? I kind of would. Just to see whether or not she's telling the truth. All of these people could be bullshitting us. They could be talking out of their asses. But if we see David, then that is irrefutable proof. Then again, it, it might not be irrefutable proof. She's got money. She could hire an actor who looks like David and say, hey, the role is that you pretend to be a caveman for five hours while this guy comes and has a look at you. How about that? I think I would, though. Very well. In our next session. Oh, God. And that's where it ends for Claire. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hello, Elin. I'm fine. Work's fine. Hilda's fading fast. Terry's... Terry. Oh, you'd be pleased to know I don't have the locket anymore. 
I gave it back. All of it. Every single keepsake. She doesn't look happy about that. Oh yeah, that is not a happy face. That is not a happy face. Um, let's see, where do we want to start with? Hilda. Hilda's fading. Hilda's nearing the end. She's been sleeping a lot, not eating much. She hasn't been that argumentative either. Although, she did give me a vicious scratch yesterday. Oh! Why? Um... Why would she do that? She could just be confused. It was nothing. I was just trying to give her meds. It's hard, you know? I'm trying to help her, but she keeps fighting me. It'll be better after she's seen her daughter. I've decided I'm going to do it tonight. She hasn't got much time left. Okay. Uh, her daughter. Have I spelt that correctly? Yeah. Um, I think that's correct. Is that really what you want to talk about? Maybe I... Well, maybe that wasn't correct. Oh, the paper spike. I forgot all about that. Thank you, game. It's true then. I'd heard Dr. Decker was stabbed, but I didn't know for sure. It's weird. That whoever did it would choose the paper spike. Ooh. Why is it weird? Dr. Decker used to play with it in our sessions sometimes. You know, pick it up, handle it while we talked. I remember once, he pushed the spike through his skin. Yet this bit, here, between his thumb and his finger. He said he didn't think I'd mind the sight of blood being a nurse and all that, but actually, there wasn't any. Ooh. There was no blood. He, he's doing the exact same thing he was doing with Bryce. He was sort of testing him. However, here's the thing. Decker did like Elin. Because Elin was like, oh, I have these powers. I have these shifting abilities. And it's a gift. I want to use it. And so he liked Elin. I think the reason why he kept testing Bryce was because Bryce was like, I hate it. This is bullshit. I'm... I, th I think Bryce, I think Bryce has realised how weak-willed he is. As soon as he was given an opportunity to do dodgy shit, he did it. Like, he didn't even, oh no, I won't do that, I won't do that, and a slow decline. Nah, he went straight to like, right, I'm gonna go round my neighbour's house. So I, if he wasn't testing Elin... I wonder, maybe he just enjoyed the sensation of a paper spike going through his hand. I was a bit freaked out. At first, I thought it was a trick. A magic trick, you know? Like some kind of therapeutic test. Show the patient this retractable spike and see how they react. But it wasn't. The spike was real. How did you know the spike was real? Uh, no, the spike was real, because that implies she tested it. Dr. Decker gave me the paper spike to try. It wasn't fake. <laughs> it was pretty sharp, actually. I don't know how he did it. He said he just thought that it wouldn't hurt him, so it didn't. There's that power of belief again. Mm. Now then, back back to the scratch. What are you going to do tonight? It's, it's obvious she's going to shift. You know the answer to that, Doctor. What have we been talking about? What can I do for Hilda that will make it all better? Hmm? Is Elin going to pretend to be Hilda's daughter? Yeah, that's... That's exactly what you're going to do. Are you going 
going to pretend to be Hilda's daughter. That's the plan. I know, it sounds unbelievable, like I'm making it up. I wish I could prove it to you somehow. Um, we could try shifting now. Uh, think of someone you really love. It might help if you close your eyes. Are you thinking of them? Can you picture them? Okay, hold on. Oh! <sighs> Sorry. I don't think it's gonna work. On the bright side, that probably means you're not gonna die anytime soon. Well, hooray! I'm, I'm immediately, I wanna... Whenever something weird has happened, when you replay it, it doesn't show up. I wanna see if that's the case this time. That's the plan. I know, it sounds unbelievable, like I'm making it up. I wish I could prove it to you somehow. Um, we could try shifting now. Uh, think of someone you really love. It might help if you close your eyes. Are you thinking of them? Can you picture them? Okay, hold on. Nothing. Oh, sorry. I don't think it's gonna work. On the bright side, that probably means you're not gonna die anytime soon. I like that. I, I love that. Oh my God, what is real and what is fake? Are we going insane? Oh, I, I love it. I love it when the game does that sort of thing. Oh, I just, Oh no, there's more to look into here. I wasn't paying attention to the speech. Um, you know what, we can we can we can look back at that some other time. Um Terry. Terry seems to have backed down since I gave the keepsakes back. Actually, it doesn't seem like she's been very well. Not her usual self. Maybe she's got a bug or something. Love. Love. You haven't poisoned her, right? You haven't? Tell me you haven't. Tell me you haven't. And, ooh, that's a good question. Why did you give the locket back? I presume she's gonna say, cause we told her to. I'm, I'm very glad that she's given back all the keepsakes. It wasn't a good look. One, I didn't necessarily agree with that morally. These these people are, you know, they're, they're doped up to their eyeballs on pain medication and you're paid to be there. You are paid to listen to them and look after them. If, if Elin was a volunteer going and sitting with dying people, I might feel differently, but she's not. She's their nurse. So of course she's gonna be around them. And I, considering how many of her patients have died, I don't think she's involved in that. I think they are dying of natural causes. But considering how many of her patients have died, keeping their their stuff, it, it just wasn't a good look. You told me to. Well, not in so many words, but you said I shouldn't have kept them. And what with Terry going around telling everyone I stole them, I didn't feel like I really had any choice. The locket, the watch, the ring. But I kept the little bird Sarah Decker gave me. I wasn't supposed to mention her. Hello. Oh. Sarah Decker, Dr. Decker's mum is that. Now, oh, you know what? I'm just about out of time for this episode. In the next one, we will find out just who Sarah Decker is. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista.
Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.